he's not actually contradicting the argument. All he's saying is that it's not been effective. He's not contradicting their arguments that the Frankfurt School had this philosophy that was then passed down to critical uh, studies, which is then now in, uh, infiltrated schools. He's not contradicting that at all. He's just saying, well, it hasn't really taken off yet. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. This work, Koch, Musk, and all their buddies aren't part of the elite at all, because they say socialism is bad. But a few college students staging a sit-in and asking, just asking, for a higher minimum wage and less discrimination are the shadowy cabal threatening the very foundations of America. Not only is this idea of a Marxist takeover not based in any kind <laughs> of reality, so oh with this narrative, Lind and these other pundits are trying to make it seem like all these different movements for equality and social change from the 60s onwards are illegitimate. He makes social progress look deeply objectionable, and this story about cultural Marxism taking over because of a few books makes it seem like the change happened through a top-down conspiracy of a few privileged woke people, instead of what really happened. Oh no. Okay, so before what we really, get to what, what really happened. happened. Okay. Well, because okay, first of all, he, he frames, so he's like, oh, there's just these poor college students who just want a higher minimum wage, right? And it's like ignoring all the insanity that we saw with Evergreen and Yale and all these right. colleges that were like hyper woke and instituting all these hyper woke um, rules and regulations and cancels cancellations and all these things. But like, no, that all just gets ignored and we get, we just pretend like none of that happened. We close our eyes and we say, Oh, they just want a higher minimum wage. That's all they yeah. want. That's all they want. Just economic justice. That's, that's yes. all they want. Oh, okay. Ignore okay. them hunting down professors right. and trying to kill them. And now, <laughs> Even though he's so, so far, he hasn't made any fact refutation of the, the line, the direct line from Frankfurt School to, you know, the critical studies implemented in America, right? But he's claiming that he's about to show us why that's wrong. Okay. So we're going to see. We're going to see what his sterling evidence is for this. Sterling. I like it. Millions of people protested, went on strike, and organized from the bottom up. Marching and fighting against the prevailing classism, racism, sexism, and homophobia that brutalized them and their peers. Only to achieve partial success, gaining legal equality without material equality. Alongside a little more positive representation in popular media. To imply that those who are the victims of capitalism, those who are the most oppressed, most marginalized, are actually behind the curtain controlling everything is just wrong, and contrary to every piece of evidence we have about who has wealth and power in this country. Ooh. Anyway, after making the claim that- Okay, wait, so wait, 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 wait. Okay, this, this, so his argument is, these guys are wrong about these theories impacting today's philosophical theories. Okay, he mm -hmm. said those guys are wrong about the Frankfurt School basically, you know, creating wokeness and cultural Marxism because yep. in America's past, Black people were oppressed. Right. And those black people, they said, hey, give us some rights. <laughs> well, he'll also say that they, they're still oppressed, so it has to be wrong. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, he yeah, alluded he'll, 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 to wealth like disparities. Yeah. So, so yeah. right. But so he's not actually, he's not actually contradicting the argument. All he's saying is that it's not been effective. <laughs> he's not contradicting their arguments that, the Frankfurt School had this philosophy that was then passed down to critical uh, studies, which is then now in, uh, infiltrated schools. He's not contradicting that at all. He's just saying, well, it hasn't really taken off yet. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And th that's what I said in uh, in my video, too, was that you can right. argue about its its efficacy because it does seem to be the case that a lot of people who get indoctrinated in this stuff, once they go out and work a real job, they kind of fall out of it like I did, like most people do, in my opinion, like. Once you leave the cushy ivory tower of the university and experience the real world, a lot of a lot of these a lot of these niche philosophies tend to fall away, right? right. So, the if if the argument is that it's not very effective because our revolution hasn't happened yet, okay, he has a point, but that's not the same thing as saying it doesn't happen. Yeah. So yeah, yeah his his argument is um, the secret Marxist conspiracy is that apparently the argument is that it's happening, but it hasn't been effective yet. And that's bad. Right. <laughs> okay. I just like, <laughs> this is so stupid. And so, well, I just, the, I think it is being, I think it is effective, but it's not effective in the way that he wants it to be. Obviously. 
I don't think it's ever going to be effective in that way. Yeah. Well, I, I guess the effective for him would be destroying society and causing a class revolt that he would see that as success. Yeah. So yeah. I guess so, so like, it is making society more contentious. So maybe it is successful in his eyes. So you see this among like a lot of environmentalists, right? So like an environmentalist will say, listen, we cannot solve the environmental catastrophe with, uh, without also taking the opportunity to implement socialism. If we, if we save the environment, but we still have capitalism, it will be considered a failure. And it's like, well, hold on. I thought you were an environmentalist, not a socialist. It's like, well, you know, the, they're actually backdooring something in, right? Yeah. There's, there's, there's like socialist accelerationism where basically they actually don't want things to get better. You know, they, they don't want you to implement a healthcare service. They don't want you to, to actually like advocate for unions or anything like that because they believe that these things will basically – they will allow capitalism to continue existing by relieving the working class's material conditions without mm -hmm. actually driving them to revolt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like there, there's something in this. I don't know if, if he's like a full accelerationist, but there's something in this here where he's like, listen – we can't make things better for people because we want them to be destitute enough to revolt. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think it's uh, going to help. Nope. The Frankfurt School and the progressive elite are behind everything conservatives already hate. Lynn then goes on to mention a few key details about them. One, they're foreigners. And two, he feels it's important to mention that they're Jewish. How does all of this stuff come here? How does it flood into our universities and indeed into our lives today? The members of the Frankfurt School are Marxist. They are also, to a man, Jewish. In 1933, the Nazis come to power in Germany, and not surprisingly, they immediately shut down the Institute for Social Research. And its members flee. They flee to New York City. Now, is he mentioning that they're Jewish just because they fled the Holocaust? Maybe. But did he also <laughs> deliver this speech at a Washington Holocaust denial conference hosted by an anti-Semitic journal? Yes. So, you okay, know. Okay, hold on. So this, I, I, I think this is, this is that, uh, that, that broader conference that wasn't just about Holocaust denialism. I think. That was I'm just not exactly side, sure that was on just that. A side issue they talked about. So. Yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, I'm man. I'm surprised like, there was no zoom in for that. Yeah, he said that the, they were Jewish. Zoom in. <laughs> the fact that he that he okay, I mean, we've been doing this this whole stream. The fact that he cut Lind off in the middle of the sentence. Oh, I know. And yeah. The, and the second half of that sentence seems like it might have been important. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking mm -hmm. that myself. <laughs> well, and again, I mean, I don't like, I don't give a shit if Lind is a secret KKK wearing hood, you know, uh, mm -hmm. runs around. Uh, in, in high heels all day. Okay, it, that's it's irrelevant to whether the idea about cultural Marxism and the line of philosophical thought from the Frankfurt School to today is accurate or not. Something which we're 13 minutes into the video, and Mister No Thought here has even has not even once attempted to refute it. All he's yeah. refuted is that he doesn't think it's been effective in grabbing hold of America's consciousness. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this is the same argument as Joan Braun, where she said, bad people believe this, therefore it's a bad idea. He's making right. the same argument because, you know, Lind could be a terrible person and believe this and it could still be true. Right. Who's to say why he thinks bringing up the Jewish thing is important? Like in other examples of conservative rhetoric, Lind Ooh, is playing on the xenophobic- music cut well, I mean, he said, he literally said why it was important. He said that's how they ended up in America. There was this thing right. called World War II where the Nazis were <laughs> killing Jews just for existing. So if you're right. Jewish, you kind of want to, like, get clear of that. Yeah. It's I mean, so it's bad. The, it's so like, incredibly bad faith. I wonder if, you, if, you, if you'll claim that, like, it's, it's, a, um, it's a conspiracy theory that the reason America made the atomic bomb first is because all the scientists that fled Germany were Jewish don't think yeah. that comes up in this <laughs> no it won't but like i wonder if he thinks that though it's oh. the same logic it's the same dumb fucking logic right right 
Look, he's just trying to hit everyone with a racist stick. That's what he's doing. That's what this entire video is about. We can't really yep. talk about the substance of what's going on in the actual culture here. You just got him running cover for, you know, simultaneously running cover for Marxism and trying to hit everyone with a racist stick as he's doing it. Mm-hmm idea that foreigners are to blame for problems in the U.S., not a domestic capitalist ruling class. Cultural Marxism in the Frankfurt School comes from a school called the Franklin School. Called the Franklin School. <laughs> it comes out of Berlin. These are a group of Marxists. One of their gentlemen I like that fled joke, Hitler, actually. came to the good. United States. This framing can be used as a way to... So, but wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, so... His his argument here doesn't make any sense because he's like, oh, you know, they're they're blaming an outside influence is kind of coming into society and you know pushing these ideas instead of blaming the ruling capitalist class. Well, first of all, the people that you're quoting don't have a problem with capitalism, so obviously they're not going to be blaming the ruling capitalist class. You complete idiot. This is a stupid point. Obviously, that's a great point. Yeah. Number two, this completely confirms what I said <laughs> about how I define that the right generally looks at problems as coming from external forces coming into society to subvert uh, some pre-existing, pre-working system. So there you go. I thought you... Oh, okay. So and, the, and, the left, and the left is from internal forces? The le See, but this actually what he said perfectly is a perfect illustration of my left-right definition. Because he's like, no, guys, don't you see the problems in our society come from the internal ruling capitalist class that have been created through hierarchy and tradition. Right. And then he and then the right winger says, no, the problem in our society is that some external Germans from the Frankfurt School with their wacky foreign ideas come into our right. country and then uh, degenerate it down. Right. OK, so there you go. My per the perfect illustration of my left-right definitions. Fled Hitler, came to the United States. This framing can be used as a way to impose stricter immigration controls, which the right is fond of. Order my government to deny entry to all communists and all Marxists. What's going on in this clip? <laughs> so this was all just so he could talk about why the Republicans are anti-immigration, I guess. But he's got some audio, real audio issues going on here. Oh. And it serves as a good way of framing socialist and progressive ideas as un-American, because foreigners are the ones that had to import them. Finally, we get to the core of the cultural Marxism conspiracy. This this video, this guy's just a dipshit, a total dipshit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't think this like he's not narrowing in on cultural Marxism. He's just using cultural Marxism as kind of a grab bag to talk about everything he hates about conservatives. That's basically yeah. what he's doing. They're just, it's ra just, it's just racist. bitch and moan and winch about uh, the people he he hates. I it's so weird. I these people that form their entire identity on some other group that they hate, they remind me of someone, someone historically. Can you think of who that might be? Does it begin with the letter N? <laughs> yes. And end with the Otsis? Yes. Oh, like, okay. what? what is different here? Like, your entire fucking identity is being <laughs> opposed to some other group that you fucking hate. Can't you build your own identity, you dipshit? It's ironic because they like to call the right reactionaries. And this entire video is just reactionary. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. Can we talk about you know, what we like? Let's talk about what we like. Well, he can't because if he does to drop the ball in saying that, well, actually, I agree with all the <laughs> yeah, because he, he'd right? be talking about how much he loves the fucking Frankfurt School. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It's all true, Adam. It's all true and based. It's just so insane. Insane. I just get so sick of it. It's so boring. Well, and, and secondly, I mean, you know, socialism is an un-American idea in terms of that it was derived entirely you know and created entirely by foreign people that were not american yeah so i mean it <laughs> is not an inaccurate statement i i have a feeling that if you asked him he would do the whole socialism is the inheritor of the liberal tradition thing 
this guy? No. No I have fucking a feeling, yeah. No shot. I think so. I don't I think he'd do so. like like what STL did is that like, well, you want liberty, fraternity, equality? Socialism does it better, baby. Uh, he might make yeah, he might view. make he might make that argument, yes. It's so but ironic cuz the closer you move to equality, the further you move from liberty. Right, but they don't accept that. So. No. For for them it's like if you have a a properly functioning state, which by necess by necessity has to take away some of your rights and privileges, just... you can then cre you can then create like a better environment that will allow you to be free. Like, uh, there's something to it, but it's n it's not always the case. People you know, like, like to compete. You're always going to get hierarchies forming just through competition, yeah. even yeah. if it's not competition over resources or material wealth. It's just it's going to be competition over status. Mm -hmm. but there's, there's something to be said for like if you have an orderly society it's more free in some senses because you don't, you don't have to worry about getting fucking mugged walking down the street yes. because the cops do their job and that sort of thing but like like that's the argument that socialists basically make is that you just build up society more you have more centralized control and then that can create uh, an environment where you will have more freedom because you're free from Let's say the influences of bad actors. Well, That's going to be something, something approximating their argument. It's just, it's not a universal truth, basically. Well, I just, I just noticed the saying: liberty, fraternity, equality. Is actually striving for two things that are contradictory. Yes. Yeah. So. The white supremacy stuff. The point where the cultural Marxism story culminates is what these Marxists supposedly do once they're here. Gramsci said that the workers can never see their true class interest as defined by Marxism until they are freed from Western culture and particularly from the Christian religion. He also theorized that the great obstacle to the creation of a Marxist paradise was the culture, was Western civilization itself. For conservatives, the main goal of cultural Marxists is to Graham, destroy the West. In the West, but... Well, I'm curious. Okay, so he had Lynn say all that stuff. I, does this guy disagree with any of that? I'm yeah, assuming he that's agree my with big all of question. That. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, because Gramsci absolutely said that. Right, but I'm assuming, I'm assuming his philosophy. <laughs> right, I'm assuming not only would he dis not disagree that Gramsci said that. I'm assuming that no thought here would literally agree with that idea. Yeah, and think that that's true. Yeah, like you have to overcome religion. You have to overcome you know capitalist dominant culture to to have a socialist paradise. Yes, of course he would. His I whole mean, goal it, it seems is like to destroy the West. Yeah. Right. What? His whole goal well, he, is he to destroy the West. What are he, you talking he about? Pro he probably thinks he's improving the West if you actually asked him. It's like, oh, we'll make the West better by making it Marxist. Look, he, but, he thinks capital. Look, he thinks the inequality comes from capitalism. It's a feature of capitalism. And in order to do away with that, you have to destroy the capitalist system. That is destroying the West. Right. 100%. Well, he, yeah, but he. Instead of saying West, he would say, well, he, he's in favor of destroying liberalism or Western yeah. liberalism, right? Yeah, the, the liberal world order to replace it with a socialist world order. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't know. West, you think social democracy paired with a, a market economy. That's the West. I mean, you only say that because, you know, you're a dirty capitalist. Well, no, that's it. That is. Fukuyama says that. That's like, <laughs> that's pretty. Dirty capitalist. <laughs> I'm just saying like and this is another thing that 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 Fukuyama talks about the the will to power that people have the market economy is a good way to channel that into a productive use when these other socialist systems do away with the market economy what do you think happens with people like you know Donald Trump who have this strong will to power mm -hmm. they play it out in politics sure because there's no market economy where they can grow a business and become, you know, Mark Zuckerberg or Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These guys don't know what they're talking. They're stupid people. Very stupid. Anti-West. The forces destroying this country and the West. So everything rides on this. We don't want them when they want to destroy our country. And then he keeps putting this clip of Donald Trump. Do you, are you guys hearing bad audio on this? I can't hear anything he's saying. It's kind of echoey, yeah. Really? But I can when it, conservatives yeah. talk about cultural Marxists, it's not just to scare conservatives. It's not just to imply that marginalized people are really the ones in charge. Cultural Marxism is a foil against which the real America and the West can be defined. See, this, this is what bugs me about this. 
he's acting as if it's just some kind of buzzword that's completely meaningless. Like people aren't having an honest conversation about what yeah. exactly is going on here. You, it's like you dipshit. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> is, is anything we're talking about unclear? I mean, I feel like a two-year-old could understand this. Um, I agree that a two-year-old should be able to understand. <laughs> yeah, it's super easy. You look at the world. Look, you look at the world in bourgeoisie and proletariat. You look at it through a class lens. Other people are going to start using that same lens to look at other features as oppressive and oppressed. It's so simple. It's very easy, okay? Mm -hmm. And all the right-wingers talking about this are talking about it in that kind of framework. It's not just to scare people. It's not to say, oh, Marxism, you know that stuff that scares you. Woohoo! Right. <laughs> I mean, they're talking about something. I just, it's so, it bugs the shit out of me when people are like just, <laughs> what the, why are you even making this video, dude? Because he, basically, propaganda. everything that cultural, what was that? Why is he it's making propaganda. this propaganda. That's why he's making this video. This is propaganda. To All fight back it. against the evil Republican. But it's not even, I mean, it's just, it's not, there's not really any substance here. This is completely substanceless. I mean, he could just sit back and say, when Republicans say it, when conservatives say it, it's a lie. Over and over and over again for 22 minutes. And it would basically be the same video. Where's the substance here? here? I, I, I've, I've got a question for you. Yeah. I've got a question for you. So at, at the end of my video, I, I, I proposed... Rather than calling it cultural Marxism, because one, that triggers a lot of people into pure irrationality, and two, because it's not only Marxists who want to do this, we should simply call it institutional capture. Do you think that Second Thought would object to that idea? It's like, listen, there are socialists who are implementing some form of institutional capture in neutral Western institutions, and we should stop them. Well, I don't think or, institutional capture talks... I mean, the reason why Marxism works is because it embodies the oppressor-oppressed dynamic. I would be game to call it something else that was intuitively uh, meaningful. Well, sure, but like institutional capture just basically means that you have, let's say, um, an institution that operates in a neutral manner, and then someone comes yeah, in with a political bent and could, then changes it. Look, sure, Christianity yeah, could... Yeah. could participate yeah. in institutional capture too it doesn't mean the same thing as cultural marxism well sure but i mean cultural marxism is a form of institutional capture um and, i mean it, it is i don't i think that and, term is too vague for yeah me. too like, vague um we were kind of thinking about this the other day like what was we need another term for it i think one of the terms we came for was cultural liberalism um, oh yeah you're cultural right cultural illiberalism right because I really think the key to this, the right doesn't want to adopt this because liberal means Democrat. But the really the key to destroying wokeness is to label label it illiberal, and because that's the only way to kind of pull off the shell, pull off the sheet that all this shit is hiding under, and kind of make the public address what is going on here. Right. Yeah. Culturally it's, liberalism, I do like. Yeah, I remember we talked about. That. Let's just call it cultural fascism. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I do. I, I think that does have a nice ring to it. I'm I mean, I, admit. <laughs> I don't think that makes Cultural sense. Cultural fascism, like baby. Yeah. Well, illiberalism, I think, is, I mean, it's fascism is illiberalism. That, it's mean, a form of liberalism, true. yeah. Mm -hmm. That is true, I yeah. guess. And we can call Second Thought a cultural fascist. How cool is that? I mean, yeah, is... like, he, he doesn't have to be like an like a classical fascist or mm -hmm. some sort of neo-fascist. He's a cultural fascist There now. you go. Yeah. There you go. Like he doesn't actually he doesn't have to actually want, you know, a fascist state to be a cultural fascist. Mm -hmm. We can play with words too, you see. There you go. I like it. I like it works. That. I like it. Okay. So we're we're all settled on cultural fascist, right? Cultural fascism. Uh yep. yeah, whatever. Let's work on the Wikipedia page. Cultural <laughs> Marxists are the West is not. In their eyes, the US is quote. Constitute okay, now he has something here that says the what's the alt right here? He's sneaking stuff in here. So the alt right political use of discourse of cultural Marxism, intersectional hate. I like that. 
Um, the section identifies and discusses seven political rhetoric uses of the alt right's discourse of cultural Marxism. First, the alt right uses the discourse of cultural Marxism as a culture or strategy for constructing an American self and its hateful image. The U.S. is a sovereign territorial state with the meaning of America as a terrain of struggle between political blocks that vie for hegemony over civil society in the United States. You know, it's kind of wild because that's literally what the socialists believe. I don't know how this is the alt right, <laughs> but okay. The longstanding American culture wars express deep disagreements about the essence of America. The alt-right's discourse that cultural Marxism is one tool in this battle to construct the meaning of what America essentially is and is not. To blah, blah, blah. Okay, that comes blah, blah, blah. Suited by selective ethno-racial, sexual, religious, and economic characteristics. America's ethno-racial composition is white, Anglo-Saxon, and European. Amer See, well, this is such bullshit because who cares? Like, a bunch <laughs> of racist use this term and talk about this from their perspective it doesn't change anything no it, it doesn't does. change anything it does what i don't understand what you don't understand okay if a racist person believes something mm -hmm. then it's automatically wrong okay even if <laughs> sure, even I... if other people that are not racist can believe the same thing or a similar thing in a non-racialized context i sure okay. hope all these racists are flat earthers man i really do otherwise yeah. we're fucked <laughs> Right. Yeah. So, so at the bottom here, in, in the part that he didn't highlight, he says, "For the alt right, this is the essential America, an alt American imagined community." So basically, the alt right has this vision of America where it's predominantly white, it's Anglo-Saxon, it's European, it's patriarchal, heteronormative, all all of this shit, right? Mm -hmm. And now that's probably partially true, but also definitely not true in a lot of cases. But more importantly, though, is that the cultural Marxists seek to disrupt that on the way to the socialist revolution and so that's why they've 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 identified a problem they have this label to talk about it and because they've identified the problem that's coming to overthrow their their white heteronormative patriarchy that like I, it makes it makes identifying the problem itself racist and sexist it's like you could also be a member who's not of the alt-right and doesn't care about the patriarchy and doesn't care about America's racial makeup and still notice that they're doing this. Yes, of course. <laughs> That's, That's the whole impossible. Point. I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. That's literally <laughs> impossible. What are you saying? What are you suggesting? And probably also racist. Probably, yeah. It's okay, he admits it. <laughs> America's gender sex regime is patriarchal, heteronormative, and centered around the nuclear family. Its religious order is Christian. Its economic structure is capitalist. The values of individualism, meritocracy, and private property are sacrosanct. For conservatives, then, That's cultural Marxists values, pose though. an outside- right. Look at this. He, he, he types out some alt-right right screed, and then he's like, for conservatives. <laughs> right. The conflation. Oh, it's just so bad faith. Yeah. I'd threat to this so-called real America, either because they're foreigners or because holding Marxist beliefs makes you not American according to their definition. The hectoring lifestyle liberals, the one who work to crush the American spirit, freedom and independence of mind, masculinity. Because they are godless. They uh, could care less about the, the capitalism of property and they hate the, the nuclear family. Oh. These are all true. Yeah, Conservatives all true don't statements. care that socialist ideas have been well established in the U.S. for over a century and promoted by Americans like Eugene Debs and MLK. Never mind <laughs> that America has never been a country populated entirely by white people or Christians. Never mind that who counts as white has never been consistent. Never mind that capitalism is destructive, exploitative, and leading us to extinction. Because these are the things that Marxists believe, they are un-American beliefs. So, okay. So his argument is his, his three arguments. Number one, they're wrong. This this cultural Marxism idea is wrong because there are a bunch of socialists that existed in America before the Frankfurt School. Okay, congratulations. Wow. Okay, great argument. Uh, number two, they're wrong because capitalism bad. <laughs> you didn't see the homeless camp, Sitch? Come on. <laughs> right, right. And uh, number three, they're wrong because. Be because America apparently has a rich history of socialism, so therefore it's really an American idea. Like this, none of the first of all, these arguments are really stupid. Number okay, these arguments are really stupid. But then on top of it, none of it again. This is so slimy. 
because he's not actually disagreeing with any of the concepts of cultural Marxism at all. He's trying to do this thing where he's going to make his audience think none of this is happening. It's all conspiracy theory. But he's not actually saying that. He's very, he's making a very specific, different argument that just lead that kind of like inceptions that idea into people's minds. When it seems like in reality, he thinks that the cultural Marxism is a good idea. It just hasn't taken off yet. Right. Yeah. Hasn't had the cultural impact he wishes it had. Right. Hi, you just listened to a clip from the Sitch and Adams show. If you like what you heard, you can listen to our live show right here on this channel on Sunday, starting at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. And if you want, you can super chat us. We read $20 and up super chats on the show and then do a follow-up stream on the following Tuesday where we read the rest of the unread super chats and interact with fans of the show. Subscribe to this channel right here to listen to the live show or to listen to more of our awesome clips.